If you're looking for the answers, I still don't have them. But what I do have is a particular set of skills. Skills I've acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people who mislead, misinform, or misrepresent the sports card industry. So if you don't do that, I'll let it go. But if you do, I'm going to talk about you. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of the Sports Card Investigator Show. My name is Andy. I am your humble host. And I think today's going to be a pretty thought-provoking, not aren't they all, but a thought-provoking episode. You know, recently I was checking out Twitter on basketball, always trying to keep up with the latest and greatest news, and I saw a tweet from Shams that caught my attention. You're probably seeing it now. Basically, he just said, Fun Development Fanatics is launching basketball cards under its Tops brand beginning in the 2023-24 NBA season. Pretty cool, right? Well, influencers and content creators have been buzzing about this, speculating on its significance in our world of sports cards, and rightfully so. Uh, the burning question has been on everyone's mind is whether the product will be licensed or not. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have any inside information on this. However, hunch, belief, I believe it's highly likely that some way or another this product will be licensed. Uh, I was thinking if Shams knew really anything about the sports card industry and wanted a real scoop, he probably would have asked that question. Uh, he's that connected, but maybe he does. Maybe he was just told not to say. My guess is he was just asked to put the tweet out, get some publicity, but who knows. So this got me thinking about the future of the sports card hobby, pondering what it'll be, what it'll look like. And I don't, I, I realize that we really don't have to hop into Stewie's time machine to find out. We'll go get him. But remember, Brian, don't touch anything when we're in the past. Even stepping on a mosquito could create a chain reaction that drastically alters the present. Really? Nah, you can do whatever you want. Come on! The future of our hobby, like it or not, is right before our very eyes. You know, it's evident that the world of sports cards is on the cusp of a major transformation. And the direction it will take is yet to be determined. Uh, as I look into the future, I contemplated what factors would play a crucial role in determining the hobby's trajectory. And after some careful consideration and thought, I concluded that probably four key elements will dictate the future of sports cards. So let's take a look at our crystal ball. The first thing I think we have to look at is availability. The availability of sports cards, it's going to be a critical factor in determining their future. In the past, sports cards were readily available. People could easily purchase them whenever they desired. I recall the days of walking through Target on something not on a card hunt and grabbing a box of Prism on my way out for a few bucks, literally under 10 bucks or visiting my local card store and buying a pack of cards, or even, dare I say, a hobby box, they are cheap. Probably under 200 bucks. The supply was abundant, and whatever your involvement in the hobby was, you had a broad selection of cards to choose from. But then what happened? COVID-19 turned everything on its head, and the availability of sports cards went surging. Manufacturers struggled to keep up with the production, resulting in limited supplies and long wait times. The stuff that was available was poorly produced. That really hasn't changed much. The unavailability led to increase in demand, which in turn drove up prices and encouraged a frenzy on the secondary market. It also spawned a bunch of wannabe sports card entrepreneurs, but that's for another day. But remember... 
those were the days where individuals were camping overnight in parking lots in hopes of snagging a few boxes and flipping them for a profit. And the profits they were they made. Uh, people traveling hundreds of miles a day in search of cards and then posting them on YouTube so all of us that tried and failed would revel in their successes. I hated that. How about the ones putting out videos on how quitting their job and going sports card full time? But I digress. While it's true that in present day, sports cards are more readily available uh, than they were, especially during the peak of the pandemic, the increase in availability may not necessarily be a good thing. Uh, one potential risk that I know you guys are aware of is overproduction. In the past, manufacturers have been guilty of flooding the market with too many cards, resulting in an oversupply and decreased, decreased, a decrease in value. The overproduction was detrimental to the industry, leading to a decline in interest among collectors and investors. How many people did we lose during that time? And what's the old saying? Those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. The sudden availability of cards in the current market may raise question about the sustainability of this trend. As fanatics takes the reins of the industry, collectors and investors, or should I say buyers, may wonder if this abundance of cards will continue. Will fanatics maintain a careful balance between supply and demand, or will they risk overproduction in their eagerness to dominate the market? Sounds like something Austin Powers <laughs> would say. How about another word? How about affordability in the sports card industry? Affordability is crucial to the sustainability of our hobby. While the past few years have seen a roller coaster in prices and some cards reaching astronomical prices, it is encouraging to see that these prices have started to come down a little bit to more reasonable levels relative, I know, not quite back to where they were, but moving in the right direction. So what do you guys think the pricing strategy will be for Fanatics? That's going to be a key indicator on how this industry is going to evolve in terms of affordability. Will Fanatics offer cards at reasonable prices or will they follow the trend of overpricing cards as seen in the recent past? It's going to be essential for Fanatics to balance the desire for profit with the need to, need to keep prices within reach of the average everyday person in our hobby. It's worth noting that affordability of individual cards is not only impacted by the price of hobby and retail boxes, but also by factors such as rarity, which we'll talk about in a bit, player performance, and market demand. So it's going to be real interesting to see how Fanatics approaches these factors and how it will affect pricing of individual cards. Now, the good thing, as I mentioned, is sports cards are becoming more accessible and more affordable. I know, I know, it is relative. I saw Prism Basketball on the Panini website, $670, probably about 70% higher than it should be. And guess what? If you want a box of hobby basketball, Prism Basketball, as of this taping, you can go on the Panini website and pick up a box or two or six. That's right. It's sitting on their website. Who would have thought that the crazy prices of overproduced product with awful quality control was not sustainable? You can buy it cheaper on eBay, and I'm going to guess there's going to be some good deals on it coming up soon. And the big reason that it's sitting, because you can't flip it. You can't flip it. Gone are the days you buy a $700 box and flip it for twelve or $1,400. It's not a business proposition. Dare I say it's back to being a, a hobby? And as an aside, this is important, I want you to keep in mind that buying a retail box with the expectation of hitting the jackpot is a losing proposition. Uh, you want an idea on what this product looks like? Watch some of the breaks and see how many people, if you bought a box, would make any money. However, we have to remember that if we're looking for accurate predictions about the future of sports cards, we have to consider prices of these products as a crucial determining factor. Now, let's hope that Fanatics finds a happy medium. It's important to remember that the success of the hobby depends on a very diverse group of hobbyists, not just those who can afford 
high-end products. It's crucial to have affordable options available to every participant in the hobby, from beginners to, well, you know, the other guys. And this is not only going to make the hobby more accessible, but it's going to help grow the hobby and grow the market. And that is what Fanatics should be focused on. And again, word of the day, it's going to be interesting to see how Fanatics approaches pricing for their products. We've seen a taste of it on the products they've offered, right? Their drops, their exclusives. They have the opportunity to set a standard for affordability and accessibility. Let's hope they do the right thing. They could change the landscape of this hobby, making it more inclusive and fun and enjoyable for everyone. One could hope. I am optimism is internal, eternal, internal. I wasn't quite sure what the best word would be. I settled on a couple. I chose one. How about rarity? It's true that the concept of rarity has been diluted in the sports card market over the past few years. The explosion of parallel parallels with various print runs and numbered cards has made it difficult to truly to determine the rarity of a card. I know that's true for me. And this has led to some skepticism about perceived value of these cards, rightfully so. However, rarity still does play a big role in the hobby, particularly when some of the high-end sets, National Treasure and alike. You know as well as I, these sets are known for their limited print runs, making them highly coveted. But ultimately, the concept of rarity is subjective and can vary from person to person. I was going to say collector to collector, but every, not everyone is a collector. Isn't it crazy that even talking about sports cards, I feel the need to be politically correct. Now, some may value the uniqueness of a one-of-one one card, while others prefer the aesthetics of a parallel with a low number print, a case hit. Even though players may have a ton of one-of-ones or other numbered cards, it's the illusion of rarity. And as the hobby evolves, it'll be interesting to see how the concept of rarity continues to shape the sports card market and how Fanatics approaches just that. And finally, probably most important, transparency. Transparency to me is the cornerstone of trust and integrity in the sports card hobby. The transparency in production, the transparency, transparency in distribution, the transparency in the process is what makes buyers, makes guys that participate in the hobby feel secure in their purchases. And it's important for companies to operate ethically and honestly and to be transparent about their practice. And this, is, this will build a loyal customer base. And fanatics can lead the way. They can lead the way by providing transparency in their production and distribution process, thereby building trust within us. And also adding and ensuring the longevity of the sports card hobby. Am I holding my breath? I'm an op I am optimistic. And as members of this great hobby, we want to see it thrive and continue to grow. And transparency is, a, is an essential factor in achieving just that. Overall, the future of the sports card hobby remains uncertain. But it's clear that Fanatics has the potential to change the landscape of the hobby. And let's hope, let's pray they make the right choices. And that's a glimpse into the future, sports card investigator style. I am the internal optimist, and I think the hobby will be just fine. Although I never want to come across too positive. Oh, God, no. So let me know your thoughts. What's the most important thing for you moving forward as our hobby moves down the road? Accessibility, affordability, rarity, transparency, or if, you, if I miss something, throw in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys think. So... That's all for today. Oh, don't forget to hit the like, hit the subscribe, and do all that good stuff. And until next time, take care.